to another Raw video from your favorite YouTube scout, Draft Raw Authentic. Yes, I'm finally here making another video. And like I said, it's a Raw one. So, there will be no edits. Anyway, before I get into anything, I'm a little sick right now. So, if I'm sneezing, coughing, or just something going on with my voice and all that, I'm just a little sick. Allergies and just, you know, everything all together. But anyway... If you already know by now, I am doing my 32 for 32 draft breakdown series. That is 32 teams, 32 days, a draft breakdown for every single team in the NFL draft for the 2018 NFL draft. I don't know why I said that twice, but I just did. So anyway, I've already done the AFC North and I've already done the NFC North. So I'm on the West Coast. Now, I've already finished up the AFC West. Right now, I'm on to the NFC West. And if you're seeing this video, then I've already done the Rams and the Cardinals. So please check out those videos if you like any of those teams or, if, you know, your favorite team is in this division. But today's video, if you can tell by the title, will be about the San Francisco 49ers. Yes, the 49ers and their draft. So, you know what? Let's just get into it. In the first round, the 49ers selected Mike McGlinchey. Mike McGlinchey, to me, is the safest offensive tackle prospect in this draft. Other guys have a little bit of questions about him. Um, I like TCU's Joseph Noteboom, but he has some questions about him. I like Colton Miller from UCLA, but he has some questions about him. I like Brian O'Neill from uh, what's going on? Pitt. But, you know, he has some questions about him. The only tackle that didn't have any real questions about him, you or you can say flaws, was Mike McGlinchey. McGlinchey may not be the strongest. He may, not be, he may not be the quickest foot. But I can say this. The guy is technically sound and, like I said, is the safest offensive tackle prospect in this draft. Now, people, fans, or media may be a little bit mad that they picked him with the ninth pick. I'm going to just say I'd rather have a safe player with that high of a pick, then to pick someone, and then they become just a straight-up bust. I mean, you have the ninth pick overall. You got to hit. So, And what he does is that he gives them the ability to play him at right tackle. Um, And did, were they the team that traded the tackle to the Patriots? I'm not sure. It don't matter. So he has the ability to play right tackle. And then when Joe St uh, Staley decides to retire, you have your future left tackle. So... It's a good pick. In the second round, though, they picked up Dante Pettis from Washington, wide receiver. I am not the biggest fan of Dante. I'm not going to say that he's a bad receiver. I just think that he's a better playmaker than he is as a wide receiver. And you say, well, what do you mean playmaker? Tariq Hill technically is a wide receiver, right? But you can say Tariq Hill is a better playmaker than he is a wide receiver. Now you get what I mean when I say that? It's not that... You know, he can't make plays or he can't be a receiver in this league. He's just a better player when it's just straight up the ball is in his hand. Whether it's kick return, punt return, reverses, or being able to throw him a short pass or even a long pass and being able to make plays. That's what type of receiver he is. I don't think he's that game-changer number one, nor do I think he's a number two. I just think that he's a, not to say a gadget guy, because I think he's a little bit more than that, but I think that <clears throat> when it comes down to it, he's a guy that, you just have to get the ball in his hands, and he's going to be able to make a play. So, don't hurt, don't don't hate me on saying that. Anyway, in the third round, the next pick they chose. They had two third round picks. One of them was Fred Warner from BYU. I watched that guy's tape, and I just was not impressed by him at all. It was not impressive. I don't think he made. He wasn't. There was nothing that he did that just made me kind of say, oh, he's going to be a pretty good player. It was nothing. The guy was boring to watch. And not to say boring to like, oh, I want to see high highlighted popping type plays. It's just that I want to see him, you at least got to try to make a difference. And he just didn't make a difference for that BYU team. Um, there was plays that he overrun. There was plays where he got washed out. There's plays where he's not in position to make the play. It's, it was completely bad. Maybe the 49ers know something that I don't know, but I don't know about this pick, folks. So if he turns out to be a bust, just you heard it from here, to me he's not really that good. Then in the third, then the other third round pick, they chose Tavarius Moore, defensive back from Southern Miss. I used two different draft websites to study up 
on these draft prospects, and his name never popped up on either one of them. So I, I can't give any real like opinion about him as a player, and I won't not use another person's opinion about who this player is. So I'm going to just skip his name, and I'm going to just go to the rest of the guys. Sorry about that. In the fourth round, they, they went on and chose Contavia Street, defensive end from NC State. Now, he was the only defensive lineman from NC State that was just kind of May. Um, guys like B.J. Hill and Justin Jones and obviously Bradley Chubb were the mainstays of that defensive line. He was just kind of there, and if he made plays, it's because all of those guys were being blocked really, really well. This is a guy that usually, though, he won't get off one-on-one -on -one blocks. He's an average type of player, average pass rusher. He does a lot of things average. Just he's average. There's nothing really that explosive about him, and it actually showed up in the combine. When you look at that four eight seven speed, you don't see the the actual burst of athleticism. He doesn't have it. Um, he is a strong guy, and I think that with the 49ers, if they are doing a three four, I'm not sure if they're still doing a three four. Maybe him coming in and being a five technique will actually be a good idea. But if, if they are in a 4-3, I don't know about this pick. But it's kind of reminiscent of the guys that they do already have with uh, the two guys from Oregon, um, Eric Armstrong and uh, I forgot who the other guy's name was. I, uh, okay, I can't think of his name. And then Solomon Thomas that they picked up last year. It just kind of reiterates more of what they're used to actually going up and getting. So, um Overall, I just think that he's an average player, and I don't know if he will make that much difference on the team, but who knows? I could be wrong, but we'll see in about two or three years. The next player on the list is DJ Reed, cornerback from Kansas State. Now, DJ Reed, he was actually not that bad when I watched him. And if I can try to look at my notes of what I may, may have said about him, I, don't, I may have not actually wrote him down. Yeah, I actually didn't wrote him down, but I do remember watching him. And he wasn't that bad of a player. Um, there was things he definitely needed to work on, though. It was a lot of things that he actually needed to work on. I think that um, him not being a natural tackler was one of the things. Um, also, he wasn't consistent in his cover skills, but he wasn't a guy that was so terrible that it was just like he shouldn't be drafted. I think that where they got him at was a pretty good part of where they got him at and I can see the athleticism that DJ Reed does carry this dude can actually be a pretty good corner years down the road but obviously he's going to have to really uh he's going to have to really settle down and start to get better and better as time goes on I don't like using the word develop but that's what he's going to have to do so um in the next pick they chose Marcel Harris same thing with the Tarvarius Tar uh, Tar uh, Moore Sorry. So, uh, and then the next pick with Julian Taylor, it was almost the same thing too. I'm sorry. I can't really give much on these players cause I didn't watch them. And I watched so many different prospects. I don't feel like watching any more prospect take. I'm almost done. Maybe I'll go back with some of the players that, um, I didn't get to watch that, uh, teams drafted and I can go back and then give a more better um, opinion on what the who and what these players are but right now I can't I just I'm prospect out I'm sorry <laughs> I'm just him but anyway going to the next pick they chose Richie James wide receiver from middle Tennessee I almost forgot I actually I didn't write none of that stuff down I just remember that Richie James was one of the most underrated receivers in this draft. <clears throat> I actually made a video about the underrated receivers in the 2018 NFL draft. And he was one of those, or late pro, late round prospect type receivers. And he was one of those names that, um, that was on there that I thought, you know, this guy has really, really good ability. I think, yeah, he's, so the situation that happened with him is that in the last two past seasons, he was one of the best receivers in the league I mean in, in college I'm sorry getting over 100 catches in bo both seasons and also uh I believe getting over a thousand yards in both seasons but what ended up happening with him is I believe he I believe he like ended up uh, I'm trying to get get myself together I, I swear I wrote this stuff down 
I'm sorry. I swear I wrote this stuff down, but maybe... Yeah. I probably actually tore the page out by accident. Yeah. Yeah, I actually did. Well, anyway, he was a guy that he was... Uh, I remember those two seasons. He had a, he had great seasons. Then this past season, he got hurt early, and he didn't get to finish what he was already previously doing. Now he's a guy that probably should have came out last year and decided to stay. Um, that probably would have helped him a little bit in terms of getting drafted higher than where he actually did go. But I can say this: the 49ers, you got a really good, explosive playmaking receiver. I'm telling you, you could put him in the slot. You could put him on the outside. The guy, he's going to be a surprise for the 49ers team. Dante Pettis, he's going to be pretty good too. And he's going to be able to give you that playmaking ability with the with the punt returns and kick returns and all that stuff. But Richie James, he can, he can honestly be, and I, I hate saying this because I don't like trends, but he can honestly be the next Antonio Brown type of receiver to come in the league. Or... Maybe I could say Jamison Crowder to be a little bit more like, I don't want to go to the best receiver. Let me just go to someone that's really, really good. But, yeah, he's that type of guy that's going to be able to make those type of plays. I'm telling you, this guy is a baller. 49ers fans, check this guy. Keep saying his name. Let the 49ers staff know who he is. I'm telling you, he is a baller. So, anyway, um... Thank you for watching this video. I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm sick. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Um, please share. Uh, gosh, I'm sorry. I'm messing up this whole thing. Sorry, I'm sick. Please subscribe to me if you like this video and want to see more draft breakdowns. Please hit that like button. Please sh uh, comment on this video. If you didn't like what I had to say about some of these 49ers draft picks, we can debate about it. Please share this video so other people can see it. Other people can comment. And we can have a debate and we can build this whole draft community. Once again, this is Draft Raw Authentic. I thank you for watching.